Andy the Northern Diver and welcome to this week's edition of my weekly blog. We're going to be talking about spools and reels this week. Certainly recreationally we'll use them to put up your DSMV or to pull along your surface marker boy. Stuff like we covered in last week's episode. But the further you progress into your diving career so to speak, you may decide to start penetrating wrecks, caves and even mines. Part of learning that speciality or that type of diving You'll need a line in order to get you in and safely back out from those penetrations. So in similar fashion to all my other videos then, I've laid out a selection of the kit that we're going to cover in this week's episode. So the first one is my first reel that I ever bought. It's got a means of locking and unlocking the spool. So as that turns, you can see it now it's quite positively locked. We pull the little sort of trigger mechanism that allows the, the spool to move and then it's locked off so we've got three reeling and then it locks off quite positively so if I was to drop this in front of me and there's a line going up to the surface with DSMB on it would just simply hang there it's not going to un, sort of unspool itself and go down to Davy Jones's locker so I've put some elastic around the top as you can see here tied it through the two holes in the handle it encompasses the spool and that allows me when I'm using DSMB to tie the DSMB to that straight away and, and house it under the, the elastic there so it'll fit nice and snug either clipped up to my wing or maybe in a dry suit pocket but it's nice and tidy to be housed. I've got a ring on there, it's a stainless steel sort of key ring type ring if you can see that. That allows me to tie that off in my pocket or clip it to my person. When we come to clipping things we use these bolt snaps so one end can go on there and the other end will go on a D-ring in my on my harness or it'll go in the dry suit pocket and it'll be stashed away nice and securely out of the way. So that's the that's the reel. Um, they come in various lengths and what I like to do I just to play it a little bit you can see now I'll tie two loops so the first one being big enough for the reel to completely pass through which allows us to tie it off on certain things and then beyond that big loop we've got a little small one so it's just sort of finger size so that allows us to gather that up so if it was imagine tied around something we wanted to unpick that knot we can just grab hold and pull it out certainly for a beginner to using a surface marker boy of any kind the reels probably the the safest option and the easiest one to learn from because you, if you do drop it because you're concerned about your buoyancy and trim or whatever you can just let go of it and it'll just sort of stay in front of you providing that the amount of coils that you've got out are, are nice and tight so it's a quite a positive reaction and you can hear that clunk click sort of as soon as you let go of that it's nice and easy two-handed I think you'll find all of them are that we're going to use today so that's the basic reel they're all some variant of that so it's got a handle mechanism on the spool and some form of locking it off whether it be a trigger that you press down with your thumb on here which catches much like a ratchet or one that you have a, a sort of t-bar I showed you earlier that you pull up and and it's there's some mechanism in here that it locks off onto reel the next one I want to go to is, is my preferred option. So it's a nice cheap plastic spool. Now, as with all these spools, when you get them new, I'd suggest you pull every metre of line off these and make sure it's tied on. Because there's no real means of locking this off within what we've got here, should this drop and it just will keep going and going and going and going to the bottom, so you'd assume that if you've noticed that, you could pull it all back in, albeit you'll have a great big bird's nest of string around on your knees or on the floor. You could at least then wind it all back up and hopefully your spool will still be attached to the end. So certainly if you buy these off the shelf, just make sure um, that they are tied at the end because there's no obvious point that this is tied. So if I just bought this straight from eBay or one at local dive shops that's the first thing I'd do as you can see what's like on the reel inside a, a sort of large loop big enough to get my spool through 
and the sort of finger loop at the top. We'll come into that into more detail of why later. So the benefits of having the, the nice nylon-y, plasticky one with loads of holes all the way, it's quite neutral in the water. So should you let go of it, much like we talked about this, the reel earlier, if you let go of that, it, although it will start to sink, it's not just going to plummet. Um, so you'll have you know, a reasonable shot at grabbing hold of it within a second or two. I do like these. Um, I've had a couple of these now. And the way we go about locking this off is, as you can see, around the face of the spool, there's lots of holes. So use a bolt snap again. That clips off into one of the holes. What I find quite easy is to thread the small loop through the hole. Okay. Clip your bolt snap through one of the loops and back in there. So that's off. Well, nice and tight. Okay. So nice and securely. It's not really going to go anywhere. And you can clip that into your pocket, onto your one of your D rings somewhere, nice and secure. So that's the plastic spool, lots of holes, neutrally buoyant and cheap and easy to get new ones. So the second spool that I got, it came free off eBay when I bought a DSMB and it was a good DSMB, don't get me wrong, and I still have it today. It's the single breath one that if you watched last week, you'd have seen. I do like it. It's, it's probably my easiest to inflate and easiest to use, but this is the last spool I will ever take in the water. In fact, I probably wouldn't take it. The second you let go of it, it's flown to the bottom and you'll never catch it. Um, it's good in the respect of you can get your finger inside it. Probably not if you have a big glove, but if you compare it to the one we used earlier, you can see there's no real hole in the middle that you can get your fingers in. But you can pinch it, you know, and it will spin quite easily. But what I like about this one is if you need it to, you can just pull. So if you are all fingers and thumbs whilst it's a cold day or whatever, I find it a lot easier. So the best bit about this spool is that it comes with a load of this orange line on. And what I like in the water, certainly in coloured water, is a really brightly coloured string. I, th I think it stands out a lot better, certainly for your buddies and anyone else that's in the water. They can avoid this a lot easier by, you know, clearly because of sight, it stands out a lot easier than perhaps a white string that comes on either this or or on the, on the reel. So for me, all I use this now for is tying on little bolt snaps and stuff like that, tying things on like onto torches or whatever. So great for storage, not great in the water because it's so heavy. Now I'll come on to the, the most recent purchase I've made. Um, it's very similar to a, a local brand um, of, of, but fortunately for me, Found it on eBay, it's £50 cheaper. Yeah, so I got this for less than 20 quid. It's a 40 metre spool of it, so more than enough the kind of diving I do in the UK. And it's exactly the same. It's advertised as a neutrally buoyant. I would say that's not true. It's an aluminium spool, more than enough room to get your thumb or a finger through it if you had big gloves on. Again, brightly coloured line, brightly coloured spool, so you can't miss it. Lots of great big chunk line clip holes in it. Even, and this one comes with what's called a swivel. So should, as it's on its way up to the surface, it all be twisted, or as you're spooling it back in, it prevents line twist. So that just undoes itself. So when you get to the point that you, you've almost finished spooling in, that it's all not sort of twisted, and it just frees up a bit of movement sort of thing. Comes with then its own big loop at the top and a point where you can nip it with your fingers rather than a little finger loop that we had before. So much like the other spool, you thread this off through a couple of these holes to the point that it's quite tight. Get our bolt snap, this one's a brass one. Okay, once it's almost threaded off, clip the bolt snap through it, pull it through to another hole nice and tight. So as you can see, if I line them up at the back, how, how much brighter the brightly coloured ones are and, and perhaps how much they stand out. Um, so for me, at the minute, I'm still not convinced that there's a better one than this plastic one. I'd suggest, though, that this is probably more br prone to being damaged. So, so if you imagine you're diving on a boat, you'd pass this up to the guy that was letting you on or helping you in. 
he'd put that down. You'd then pass up your dive cylinder. Your dive cylinder gets thrown in the boat like everything else does. Crashes on top of this being just quite sort of rugged plastic, but nonetheless still plastic can crack. Okay. I think once that cylinder or twin set even, you know, because they weigh about 40 kilos, <laughs> crashes straight on top of that, it's probably good night. Whereas I think being quite so robust aluminium, I reckon that would stand up to it. Whereas this stainless steel being quite thin, I'm not saying I'm strong enough to bend it, but I reckon it would bend and give way and probably be sort of goosed, if not broken altogether. So a couple of things then. So you need to, when you buy a new one, you want to wonder, is it easy enough for you to use with gloves on? Have you unpaid all the line to make sure it is tied off in case you were to drop it in the water? Is it neutrally buoyant or not? And what colour line you might perhaps want on it? The most important thing is to think about the depth or depths you're going to be diving. Because certainly if, if your max depth on qualification is 20 meters and you were to send your DSM up, DSMB up from 20 meters, then you're certainly going to need a lot more line if you're in current. So you might need a 30 meter line or maybe even perhaps a 40. So I'd, I'd probably invest in the future, which is what I've tried to talk about through all my videos is future proofing of your kit. Buy what you think you will need further down the line rather than buying what you're going to buy today. That'll do you for today, but what are you going to do tomorrow? So, for instance, I generally dive to about 20 metres week in, week out, but I've got a 40 metre line because when I go on holiday to places like the Red Sea or to Fortaventura where I go quite regularly, we quite often will dive to perhaps 30, maybe 40 metres. So this, in, in most circumstances, will do me for that sort of depth to be sending a DSMB up. Certainly if there's a lot of current, you want... It's not going to be going straight up, it's going to be going up diagonally. So you do want enough line that your DSMB will reach the surface so the boat will know where you are. Um, that takes me then on to sort of wreck penetrations and cave diving. So if we go back to the first spool that I showed you, where I've tied it off in two different loops. So we've got a big loop, big enough to pass the actual spool through. Okay, and then a smaller one that we can pick it up with our fingers, you know, to untie it and loosen it off. What we need to be thinking about is, if we were going to enter a wreck that we hadn't been in before, there was no clear blue window on the other side, so we perhaps wasn't very sure of where we were going to go and how we would get back in case maybe the silt was kicked up or we just got lost. Remember the book Hansel and Gretel back in the kit uh, as we were kids and they laid out a load of things as a trail so they knew where they were going. This is going to serve as your trail to get back. So we'll tie this off in the means I'll show you shortly. And we'll take it and, and tie it off at various intervals between the point that we get in and the point we go to. And then in order to come back, we'll just start reeling back in and undo it as we go. And then clip it back up with our bolt snap, clip it back onto our kit and head up to the surface. These are the kind of things you want to invest in now rather than if you get yourself a reel now, at some point you will outgrow that and ultimately end up on one of these. So for the purposes of this part of the video, I'm gonna use this pony cylinder um, for nothing else other than I don't have bits of wreck knocking around in my house. So, you know, it's quite sturdy. I'm not gonna be pulling on it, but I'm gonna use it to, to sort of demonstrate why or how we go about tying off. So, as I said earlier, we have a great big loop that allows us to thread the reel through. Okay, so, by doing, threading the loop through and containing that loop, we end up with a means to drop that over the top of an object, whether it be a part of a wreck, uh, some sort of rock formation, a point in a cave or a mine, and it's nice and tight, okay? And as long as we keep that line taut, the chances of that coming undone are very slim because what it's not gonna do is come so far undone when there's tension on it, that it will then undo and float above the point that it's tied on. So once it's tied off, it's nice and tight, and we go on to the next one, which I'm sure, certainly on the syllabus I was taught through BSAC, you're taught where and how to tie off and in what sort of intervals. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into that, I'm just showing you what you can do with this type of reel. Okay, and now to undo it, now I'm back 
Assuming I've swam all the way out, I'm back now to the point that I need to untie. Grab this smaller loop, pull that, which undoes it, and just threads over the top, and then it's undone under itself. That could be the same if you're using an SMB or a DSMB. So much like if you were tying off on a wreck, if we're using an SMB, we'll do exactly the same. However, this time, where the ring is at the bottom, we'll thread that through to start with, open up the big loop, thread our spool through, and pull tight. So if you imagine, that's exactly the same as, as the top of the cylinder was just then that I tied off to. However, there's no way of threading it over the top, so we've threaded it through the actual loop. So that creates a nice, easy way of connecting that's not going to over tighten, that you'll never get undone. So we just pull it on the small loop again, thread the spool back through, and we're done up nice and tight. So when we're using it in the water then, the means of, of gathering this back up, I find the easiest will be. So you always need your bolt snap, okay? So that stays on the line at all times. So you never unclip that. And what you do is you use the bolt snap to wrap it around the spool. Okay, the problem you've got is if you unclip that, you can drop it and it's gone. You could clip it to yourself, but then should you quickly need to get, you know, to tie this off because you've got something else to be doing, you've then got to find it, unclip it, and then clip it, everything together and put it on. So I find you leave it on the line all the time and never let go of it. It's not going to run off, so it's gone. You're not trying to find it and gather it up. So now I still can't clip it up. If you clip it to the spool, you find quite quickly it gets all entangled and it's, it's a bit of a nightmare. So if you leave it on the line, in your hand, and just gather the, the line up bit by bit, and then when you're ready to lock it off, just clip it off. Now there's several methods, I've said different ways I've been advised over the years how to do this. So I always thought the quickest and easiest way is the best. So literally undo the gate, pull it tight, and clip it through the first hole you get to that remains, that keeps everything tight within the spool. Somebody showed me last year, who's sort of a world-renowned uh, world instructor, I'm not going to name him, he's got a big enough head as it is. You give it two twists, and then clip it off. Okay, and then you'll do the same on the top. So that means, if one of these comes undone, either there's still tension on the line that keeps it held onto there. So I can let go of that, and it's not going anywhere. The downside, if there is one, of that is it's a little faffy to get it all undone. Oh, and I've dropped my spool now, so that's now heading to the bottom, and hopefully I've checked it's tied off so I can pull it back up. So for me, I don't really bother with that unless I was going to be sat perhaps at a, de a decompression stop or at my safety stop, I'd tie it off, and I can just be sorting myself out, ready to get up to the boat, and... I'm not really worrying about that this is going to come undone if I was to let go of it and it was just in, in front of me. So for that reason, I've not took that on board. But I'm sure, knowing the guy that taught me that technique, that there is rhyme and reason behind it. We've just covered the two main sort of types of gathering line or using line whilst we're in the water. So we've got the reel and the spool. The reel very much lends itself to learner divers, and can house an awful lot more line in some respects. Um, there's there's all obviously more advanced ones than what I've shown you, like cave reels that can hold you know a couple of hundred meters of line, I, I would imagine. Um, and then we've covered the spools. The spools being my preferred. I think it's simpler. It's got less points of of likely failure, and. It's, it's smaller, lighter, cheaper in some respects. I'd always be a big advocate for looking on eBay for them because you can buy new ones from China for like 10, 15 quid. Get as much line on there as you possibly can and go for a really bright contrasting one so it stands out. So really there's no excuse for someone crashing into it short of their own equipment failure or really dramatic tides or whatever. So thanks for watching. Hope it's been of some use to you. As ever, there's a like button at the bottom. I'd be really grateful if you click that. 
If you've got any comments whatsoever, put them in the bottom. And then we've got a subscribe button just here, should you be interested in watching any further videos. And then to this side, the bottom video is always at the farms where we went diving with seals a couple of months ago. And then the top video will be last week's talking about DSMBs. Nice one. See you later. Or on Insta. Whee.